ever wondered what contempt of court is and why it is so important in our legal system? Well, let's unravel this legal term together. The concept of contempt of court is a cornerstone in maintaining the sanctity of our legal system. It ensures respect and obedience towards the court and its orders. Imagine a system where court orders are blatantly ignored. Chaos, right? To prevent this, the Contempt of Court Act of 1971 was enacted. It is a powerful tool that courts use to uphold their authority and ensure compliance. Recently, an interesting observation was made by the Allahabad High Court. The court stated that orders issued by the Central Administrative Tribunal under the Contempt of Courts Act are subject to appeal solely to the Supreme Court and not the High Court. Intriguing, isn't it? Now that we have a basic understanding of what contempt of court is, let's delve deeper into its types. Contempt of court isn't just one thing, it's categorized into two types, civil and criminal. Now let's delve into the specifics of these categories to better understand what they entail. Firstly, civil contempt. This refers to willful disobedience of a court's judgment, decree, direction, order, writ, or other process, or a willful breach of an undertaking given to the court. But what does this look like in practice? Imagine a court orders an individual to refrain from selling a disputed property until a final decision is reached. If that individual goes ahead and sells the property anyway, they would be committing civil contempt. Their action shows a direct disregard for the court's authority and disrupts the fair administration of justice. On the flip side, we have criminal contempt. This is a more serious offense and includes any act or publication that scandalizes, lowers the authority of the court, or interferes with the due course of judicial proceedings. For instance, let's say someone publishes a false news story claiming a judge accepted a bribe to influence their decision in a case. This action would not only tarnish the judge's reputation, but also undermine public faith in the justice system. Hence, it would be seen as criminal contempt. But it's worth noting that not all actions that seem disrespectful or disruptive to court proceedings are considered contempt. The law recognizes a balance between maintaining respect for the court and upholding freedom of speech. So expressions that are made in good faith and are fair comments on the merits of a judicial order after the case has been heard and disposed of may not amount to contempt. In essence, civil contempt is about disobedience that obstructs justice while criminal contempt involves actions that disrespect or undermine the authority of the court or the justice system as a whole. Understanding these types gives us a clearer picture of what actions can be considered contemptuous. But what does the Constitution say about this? Opening, our Constitution has specific provisions that deal with contempt of court. Diving right into it, we find these provisions in Articles 129 and 215, these articles are the pillars of our justice system, empowering the Supreme Court and High Courts to maintain respect and dignity through punishment for contempt. Article 129 declares the Supreme Court as a court of record. Now what does this mean? A court of record is a court that maintains permanent records of its proceedings and judgments. And its rulings are recognized as legal precedents, but more importantly, a court of record has the power to punish for contempt of itself. This means that the Supreme Court can ensure its authority is not undermined by any contemptuous actions or words. On the other hand, Article 215 bestows a similar power on the high courts of our country. Just like the Supreme Court, every high court is also a court of record, having the authority to punish contempt of itself. These powers are vital to uphold the supremacy of the courts and protect them from unwarranted attacks. Now, you might be wondering, what does contempt of court entail? Simply put, it can be any action that disrespects the court or interferes with its proceedings. It can be a willful disobedience of a court's judgment, or even a scandalous statement that lowers the court's authority. The Contempt of Courts Act of 1971 further classifies contempt into civil and criminal, each carrying its own set of consequences. To sum up, Articles 129 and 215 are not just lifeless provisions in our Constitution, they are the sentinels that guard the sanctity and authority of our courts. They ensure that the judiciary, an integral pillar of our democracy, functions smoothly without any undue interference or disrespect. Closing. These constitutional provisions ensure that our courts can maintain their authority and dignity. 
But what happens when someone is found guilty of contempt of court? The consequences of contempt of court can be quite serious. When a person is found guilty of contempt, the court has the power to impose penalties according to the Contempt of Courts Act of 1971. For instance, in the case of civil contempt, where there's willful disobedience of a court order or breach of an undertaking given to the court, the punishment can be quite severe. Similarly, criminal contempt, which involves acts that scandalize, interfere with, or obstruct the course of justice, is taken very seriously. The law stipulates that a contempt of court may be punished with simple imprisonment for a term which may extend to six months or with a fine which may extend to 2,000 rupees or even both. However, there is a provision that the accused may be discharged or the punishment lessened if an apology is made to the satisfaction of the court. Punishments for contempt of court are designed to deter people from disrespecting the legal process, but not everything is considered contempt. It's essential to understand that not all criticisms or comments about the court amount to contempt of court. In fact, there are exceptions that uphold the principles of free speech and open dialogue. One of these exceptions involves fair and accurate reporting of judicial proceedings. This means that as long as the report is true to the proceedings and does not distort or misinterpret the facts, it doesn't constitute contempt. Similarly, another exception is the fair criticism of a judicial order, but only after the case has been heard and disposed of. This encourages constructive feedback and fosters an environment where justice is not only done, but is also seen to be done. However, this criticism must be respectful, informed, and should not undermine the authority of the court. So, while it's important to respect the authority of our courts, it's equally important to remember our rights to fair comment and criticism.